We are kicking off today with AEW, and since joining in 2021, Brian Danielson has been a top star for the company, but despite that, the American Dragon has yet to win championship gold. Now Danielson hopes to change that as on this week's Dynamite, he declared that he'll compete in the upcoming Owen Hart Foundation Men's Tournament. Danielson said that this might be his last shot, but it will be the best shot he's had in his career, and the winner will receive the honorary Owen Hart Foundation Cup Championship. This isn't the only title in Danielson's sights though, as the winner of the tournament will also receive an AEW World Championship match when the roster goes to London for All In. Before All In though, AEW will team with New Japan on June 30th for its Forbidden Door event at the UBS Arena in Elmont, New York, and a major title match was announced on Dynamite. During the show, Soraya, flanked by her brother Zack Knight and Harley Cameron, was scheduled to compete against Timeless Tony Storm's protege, Mariah May. Despite Tony's support on commentary, May lost via submission to Soraya, and the ex-WWE superstar and Cameron delivered a beatdown on May and Storm after the match. That led to Mina Shirakawa, who has been a close ally to Mariah May, to enter the fray and fend off Soraya and Harley's attack, but it was announced that Mina will challenge Storm this month. This is an interesting twist and will certainly test the loyalties of Mariah May, who teamed with Shirakawa for years in stardom before becoming Tony Storm's understudy in AEW. What are your thoughts on Timeless Tony Storm vs Mina Shirakawa for the AEW Women's World Championship at Forbidden Door? Sound off in the comments! Last week on AEW Dynamite, Mercedes Monet celebrated her TBS title win over Willow Nightingale at Double or Nothing, but she was interrupted by Sky Blue. Blue had previously attacked Monet and blindsided her again earlier in the night, and this set up an impromptu title match, which also marked Monet's in-ring Dynamite debut. Monet delivered an impressive performance against the determined Sky Blue, ultimately securing her first successful title defense, but once again, her celebration was cut short. This time it was due to Stephanie Vacker, the reigning New Japan Strong Women's Champion, and it was suggested that the pair would face off down the line. On this week's Dynamite, it was confirmed that the two will face off at Forbidden Door and that this will be a title for title match where the winner will capture both championships. When the New Japan Strong Women's title was created, the plan had been for Monet to be the first champion before last year's injury forced herself and Willow to change plans. Now Monet has the chance to be a double champion, but so does Vacker. And what do you make of their title for title match at Forbidden Door? Sound off in the comments! Forbidden Door will also see a new TNT champion be decided, as the title is currently vacated due to Adam Copeland suffering an injury at Double or Nothing. Last week, Kenosuke Takeshita qualified for the upcoming ladder match that will determine the next TNT champion, and now fans can add Mark Briscoe's name to the match. The reigning ROH World Champion defeated Brian Cage this week to qualify, all while Takeshita and Don Callis watched the match from the stands. Jack Perry, the man the Elite had tried to award the TNT title to, watched from the backstage area and later on said the universe has chosen him to be the next TNT champion. As to whether Perry qualifies for the match or is handed a spot, that remains to be seen, but we now know that Takeshita and Mark Briscoe will be part of the chaos later this month. It was at AEW Double or Nothing that MJF returned to programming and confronted former ally Adam Cole, and MJF pledged his allegiance to AEW as made clear with a tattoo. On this week's Dynamite, MJF kicked off the show to a huge ovation from the fans, and after some fun antics, turned his attention to those currently on top of AEW. MJF landed shots with references to Swerve Strickland, Kazuchika Okada, and Will Ospreay, and continued to brag about his supremacy before being interrupted by Roosh. Roosh had a warning to MJF, and their verbal back and forth led to a brawl, with Roosh throwing punches with MJF before officials were able to intervene. The crux of MJF's promo was to make clear that the former AEW World Champion is back from his injury, and he also has his sights set on the last man he wrestled, Samoa Joe. It was Joe who dethroned MJF as AEW World's Champion at World's End in December, and when speaking to Sports Illustrated, Friedman reflected on the match. He said, As far as that Samoa Joe match goes, full transparency, my shoulder was so messed up I couldn't even do cardio. When I ran, my arms would swing slightly, and the pain that would cause was unbearable. But I got in the ring that night to do my job. Frankly, I find that interesting. A lot of people in my generation are Please print that. They're too afraid to get in there when they have a boo-boo. That's not how I operate. I take my job very seriously. If you put MJF on the top of the billing, I'm showing up. 
And one more thing about that match, Joe's a tubby little b and if we ever wrestle again, I'm going to bite his face off. I will give him credit. As we expected, MJF isn't holding back with his comments now that he's back, and what do you make of what he had to say in this interview and on Dynamite? Let us know down below. It was back in the 2024 Men's Royal Rumble match that CM Punk suffered an injury that has kept him out of the ring ever since, but despite this, Punk has remained a focus on TV. CM Punk has continued his feud with Drew McIntyre, a man who has taken credit for Punk's injury, and a match between them is expected to happen this year. Now that match could be sooner than you'd think, as on social media, Punk shared footage of his workout, and the former world champion looks completely healed. In just a matter of days, Drew McIntyre will compete for the World Heavyweight Championship in his native Scotland, but will a recovered CM Punk be a difference maker? Time will tell. During the recent Casino Gauntlet match, Leo Rush made his return to AEW after previously having a run with the company back in 2021. Despite an excellent showing by Rush, the Casino Gauntlet match was won by Will Ospreay, and now more has come to light about his return to the company. It's reported that Rush's return was planned nearly a week in advance, and that Rush had always left the door open for a comeback to AEW. In an update from Fightful Select, it stated that AEW remains open to utilizing Leo Rush in the future, although no definite plans have been confirmed at this time. During his first run with AEW, Rush had just five matches, and his run was limited due to injuries, but after his recent return, don't count out seeing more of him in an AEW ring. It was at AEW Double or Nothing that Will Ospreay won the AEW International Championship, and the British star has already had his first title defense. Osprey wasn't on this week's episode of Dynamite, though, and Fightful Select reports that Osprey has the week off after working Double or Nothing, Dynamite, and Collision. Fans of the Billy Goat shouldn't be too alarmed, as Osprey will be back next week, and with a world title match coming up, expect plenty of him in the run-up to Forbidden Door. Not too long ago, it was announced that five weeks of AEW Collision will take place from the Arlington Expo Center, which has been dubbed the Path to All In series. This path will also include the ROH Death Before Dishonor event, with speculation of more ROH events being added, and AEW have received a favorable deal for this unique schedule. WrestleNomics reports that AEW's deal with the Expo Center includes a discounted rate of $232,000 to host stage events at the venue throughout July and August. There have also been discussions about CMLL or New Japan subletting the venue at times when AEW aren't using it, as both promotions have been working with AEW. Both CMLL and New Japan are set to be represented at Forbidden Door, and this deal could prove to be very cost-effective for all elite wrestling. Now, the last time fans saw Jamie Hayter in the ring, it was at Double or Nothing 2023, as she had been sidelined with an injury, and she isn't the only woman missing from TV. Britt Baker hasn't competed for AEW since September of last year, a fact that's not gone unnoticed by fans, and what is going on with both former women's world champions? Sitting down with Uprock Sports, Tony Khan discussed both women and said that Baker has been out injured for an extended period of time, and he'd love to have her back soon. As for Hayter, her timetable to return is still pending, according to Khan, and like Baker, Khan can't wait to have her back among the active roster. Ultimately, fans will just have to keep waiting for whenever either woman returns, and we're wishing both Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter the best in their ongoing recoveries. As we mentioned, MJF confirmed at Double or Nothing that he was staying with AEW with a new tattoo, putting to bed any rumors that he was planning to jump ship to WWE. Before 2024, MJF had teased a bidding war for his services, and openly teased leaving for WWE and aligning with Cody Rhodes, but was that ever a real possibility? According to MJF himself, the answer is yes, as during his interview with Sports Illustrated, he spoke about whether there was a chance he was going to sign with WWE, and said, Of course there was. Am I going to get into the weeds? No, at this point in time, this move made the most sense for me. I'm making a ton of f***ing money. As far as when the contract ends, that's nobody's business but my own. For all his talk, it was reported last year that MJF had signed a new deal with AEW, and at the time, it was said that there had been no discussions with WWE about him joining. Could MJF one day join WWE? It's certainly possible, but for now, the scumbag is focused on AEW and returning to the top of the All Elite promotion. Back to AEW Dynamite and in a World Championship main event, Swerve Strickland put his title on the line against a very game Roderick Strong. 
The match featured two of the hottest in-ring workers in AEW right now and highlighted how good Strong has become in recent years while confirming Swerve can work with anyone. Strong sold an injured knee, dodging one house call by Strickland, only to fall victim to another as the champion retained and closed out the show alongside Prince Nana and a fan. While the action was good, there remains a lingering feeling that Strickland has not been presented as the face of the company that a world champion should be. We're not saying the world champion should be the center of every major story, but between the elite, Brian Danielson, MJF, and Will Ospreay, Strickland feels far from being the top guy. Hopefully the showdown with Osprey turns things around because Strickland has a ton to offer AEW as its face and centerpiece of the company. A four-way took place to determine Will Osprey's next international title challenger, with Orange Cassidy, Kyle O'Reilly, Ray Phoenix, and Jay Lethal facing off. Phoenix nursed a knee injury through the match and ultimately overcame it, catching Lethal with an inside cradle to score the win and earn a title match for next week's Dynamite. There was no real reason given as to why these four men had earned this qualifier, and after the match, Trent Beretta came out alongside Don Callis. Orange Cassidy grabbed a chair and fended them off, and Chris Statlander then emerged and slapped her former friend. This brought out Willow Nightingale, who made the save as the heels retreated, and this match was fine, but what happened after seemed like cheap reminders of their feud. On this week's WWE NXT, JC Jane made her return to programming and was sporting a black protective face mask due to the injury she suffered in April at Spring Breakin'. It was at that event where Jane seemingly suffered a broken nose during her match with Thea Hale, but her comeback happened far earlier than expected. That's according to Fightful Select, who report that Jane's return was way ahead of schedule, and even NXT's most optimistic expectations would have seen her return later than she did. Jane didn't compete during NXT, suggesting that she's not been cleared to wrestle just yet, but it may not be long given how quickly she's been able to make it back to TV. More from NXT as the Gold Brand will host its Battleground event this weekend, and in a historic first for WWE, this show will take place from the UFC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada. The show will feature an enthralling card including Jordan Grace vs NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez and Ethan Page's in-ring debut when he takes on Trick Williams. Shayna Baszler and Lola Vice will face off in an NXT Underground match, and given the show's setting, it was reported that there had been a pitch made for WWE to use an octagon. Both women have experience in the cage, and having the match in the octagon would have been unique, but unfortunately it appears that this won't be happening. Fightful Select reports that though the idea was pitched, it would have caused logistical issues, according to those in production, and is unlikely to occur due to these issues. Regardless of that, NXT Battleground is expected to be history in the making with its incredible lineup as WWE invades Las Vegas to produce a memorable show for the ages. Video game news now as AEW Fight Forever has seen its roster grow thanks to the release of downloadable content, and now Adam Copeland is set to join the fray. The Rated R Superstar will be part of the upcoming Rated Gold Superstar pack, and fans will get Copeland as a playable character on June 12th. Since the Raw after WrestleMania, WWE programming has seen several QR codes teasing the return of Uncle Howdy, and now AEW is getting in on the QR code action. Prior to this week's Dynamite, it was revealed that a code would be appearing during the broadcast, with fans encouraged to scan it as part of a follow the money strategy. Sure enough, the code appeared during a package featuring the new AEW TBS champion, and scanning it takes fans to a website where they are encouraged to enter a secret password. In case you didn't watch Dynamite, the password is hired, and from there, fans can submit their details to keep up with the latest from Monet and her work in AEW. This is an interesting strategy, and it's believed more QR codes will come, and we'll have to see what else fans will be granted if they keep watching for codes and passwords about Monet. Now AEW Double or Nothing saw a brutal barbed wire steel cage match in which Adam Copeland defeated Malachi Black, despite the latter having the House of Black. Buddy Matthews was by his ally's side for the match, and Matthews had some support of his own, as Fightful Select reports that Rhea Ripley was also at the show. Ripley, the real-life fiancé of Buddy Matthews, hasn't competed in some time in WWE due to her injury, which ended her reign as the WWE Women's World Champion. It remains unclear as to when Ripley will be back and get her revenge on Liv Morgan, but in the meantime, she was able to enjoy AEW Double or Nothing backstage. 
Earlier this year, Kevin Kelly was fired from AEW after a series of outbursts on social media in which he claimed that Ian Riccoboni had libeled him and criticized AEW itself. Kelly's name was removed from AEW's website and he was pulled from a taping before his firing, and now the veteran broadcaster has shared his side of things during a virtual signing. Kelly claims his rift with Riccoboni stemmed from Ian speaking negatively about him in a New Japan Pro Wrestling Discord chat while Kelly was away doing commentary for the G1 Climax. When Kelly expressed his frustrations to AEW management, he said the promotion didn't care and it sure felt like Riccoboni was plotting against him. Speaking about his feelings towards AEW, Kelly said he wouldn't treat his worst enemy the way AEW treated him and said his mental health was deteriorating before his termination. Kelly said that the situation with Riccoboni and AEW affected him personally, physically, and mentally, and that he got fired by AEW the day before he was set to see a psychiatrist. The broadcaster also spoke about fans taking issue with him on Twitter and said he didn't want to compare himself to Hanakamura, but fans should know better than to target one person. Kimura sadly took her own life following online harassment after appearing on a reality show, and Kelly said that he didn't want to compare himself to her and what happened with Hana is awful. Ultimately, Kevin Kelly's time with AEW is over, and it seems he's not wanting to make a return, as the two sides simply had too different a view about the situation, leading to his exit. In 2023, Nick Hogan, the son of Hulk Hogan, was arrested and charged with driving under the influence, and after being pulled over, he refused to submit to a breathalyzer test. Nick had been driving home from his father's restaurant where he had been judging a bikini contest and, at the time, maintained a speed of 51 miles per hour in a 40 zone. After pulling over, police noted a strong odor of alcohol, swaying balance from Nick, as well as other signs of impairment, and at the time, Nick pled not guilty to the charge against him. Now though, PW Insider reports that a hearing will take place today and will see Nick alter his plea regarding last November's arrest. This is not Nick's first driving dispute, as a crash in 2007 left his friend, a U.S. Marine, requiring full-time care for life, and we'll continue to follow this case for further updates. In recent weeks, Brooks Jensen has been in a unique angle with NXT, as he's taken issue with management and even recently suggested he'd been let go. During a commercial break on this week's episode, Jensen emerged through the crowd and confronted the commentary team before he was escorted away by security. This matter was addressed as the show came back from commercial, and Fightful Select reports that Vic Joseph has received praise for his role in the angle. In a recent video shared online, Jensen said he's able to go where he wants, and said he may go make an impact, a nod to possibly appearing for TNA as part of their collab with WWE. In their report though, Fightful said they've not heard of any plans for Jensen to appear for TNA, despite what he's had to say on Twitter. Nevertheless, Brooks Jensen has garnered a lot of interest, the most in his WWE career so far, and fans are eager to see what he says and does next in this captivating angle. But what have you made of Jensen's angle so far? Would you like to see him make an impact as part of a TNA wrestling event? Sound off in the comments down below. And we're ending with some John Cena news, as the 16-time WWE World Champion has been nominated for a Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Award for Best Actor. Cena's role as Jacob Toretto in Fast X faces stiff competition, including Chris Pratt, Jason Momoa, and Timothy Chalamet, and we'll have to see who wins at the ceremony on July 13th. 